so thanks for joining today in today's webinar we're going to go back to basics but actually what we're going to be talking about is how to get the most value out of microsoft 365 and make sure that your team have got the basics nailed i'm really proud of the way the wednesday webinars actually highlight some of the fantastic innovation uh, and use cases that the modern technology in policing is allowing us to access and to unlock and these fantastic opportunities all rely on our staff having a common basic understanding of the tools. Very few people in modern organisations are actually aware, let alone using much of the basic functionality that's now available by default in the Microsoft 365 suite of tools, including in Word, Excel and PowerPoint, because they've changed hugely over the last couple of years, uh, let alone the last 20 years. I can remember doing an evening course when I get to gain my com European computer driving license about 22 years ago, which was the last time I actually undertook formal training on Word, on Excel. But everything I learned there pretty much still works today. So, but there's more efficient ways, more effective ways of achieving the results or even better results. Um, I don't use Word, PowerPoint and Excel the same way now. In fact, I rarely use Excel. I've updated my learning and recognised there are other tools that are for certain tasks which are far better. So with thousands of users in each force, all at different levels of knowledge, skill and capability, it's going to be vital that we have a common standard of knowledge and skill on the core tools. That will enable us to leverage the advances in the tools and the automations which are becoming more and more common in policing. So today I'm really pleased to be joined by James Evans from Kent and Essex Police, who's been working across the forces to bring everyone's skills levels to a common standard by leveraging the capabilities of the platform. Uh, and he's already seen some fantastic gains in effectiveness, efficiency for very little investment in reality. Also seeing the increase in adoption of modern working approaches and perhaps multiplying the benefits and improving the benefits of re return on investment. So James, uh, I'd like to bring you in as a, a regular contributor to our webinars. Can you start explaining about your, what your role it is and why it's so important that everybody has the basic skills? Yeah, thanks, David. Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, thanks for inviting me back uh, again to, to come back to another webinar. So my role is Microsoft 365 TAC Advisor for Essex and Kent Police. Um, it, it's a fairly unique role, I suppose, because um, it brings together the the um, uh, the conversation, if you will, between IT uh, and to its improvement and policing in general, and not just, of course, uniform or, or frontline policing, but policing across the board. Um, I guess I've got the job because I've got a, a background of various different roles across my career, uniform and, and CID, but always been a bit of a, an IT nerd, I suppose, my own self-defense, self-described um, description, and I've had an interest in 365. So the TAC advisor role is is to bridge the gap to to explain what frontline policing requires to IT and for IT to 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 make the art the possible happen so uh, and I'm also working very closely with the uh, records management team in both forces to facilitate and support migration from on-prem to SharePoint. That's brilliant so let's start off by perhaps looking at uh, the problem that you had and the approach and how you developed your approach so what were the next steps? Yeah, I mean, what, I was a business champion from the start back in 2021 when we first started the um, 365 journey, of course, called Office 365, and we had to rebrand everything to Microsoft 365. But I was one of the business champions back then, and so uh, we had the fortune within learning and development to be one of the first teams to migrate across to SharePoint, and um, with that, obviously, came some significant learning. The once I became a, a, a um, the TAC advisor last June, it became really apparent to me that we needed, and others of course, the part of the team, that we needed to do some form of training to, to get everybody to the same level. This is a significant thing for policing and of course uh, probably the biggest thing that policing has seen for, for many years in terms of a change. And uh, it's not just appropriate just to put a new system in place without that training, without that support. Of course, you know, I absolutely and so do others recognise there are other competing demands for training time and face to face training is, of course, incredibly expensive. But nonetheless, we were asking our, our staff and our officers to just kind of get on with it, if you will, and, and hope for the best. But 
uh, you, you and I know that if we were to realise the benefits of 365, we've really got to have some basic understanding. So th that that was the, the, I guess, the training needs analysis. We can't just give tools to, to people and hope for the best. Um, and um, so we recognise you need to do some form of training. Do you want me to carry on? Yeah, because uh, obviously yeah. recognising, but how do you get the buy in? Yeah, I mean, th this 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 was the thing i think from the, the, the tactical board and the strategic boards that we that we have for both forces around microsoft 365 is widely recognized by the attendees that um we needed to do something but of course that something is a challenge as i said face-to-face -face training abstracting people from the workplace is, is incredibly expensive resource intensive and timely i was the athena training manager for both forces and i know it took us nearly a year to to do that so we need something that was going to be meaningful um but but also time efficient and so we we came up with the e-learning but the challenge then of course is what do you put in the e-learning you know uh, in a journey from simple to complex we we don't want to make something overly complex and going into I don't know, disinheriting permissions within a list, for example, because of course you're going to lose the audience. What we wanted to do was keep it as simple as possible. To, uh, and, and I think having the principles of if we could get 95% of the workforce understanding manage access, that's a win. Yes, there are 5% that need and want that support around Power Automate and Flows and you know all the other applications that are available. But actually, the biggest wins in terms of if we can only get everybody not to attach a document to an email anymore that's fantastic so that was the the underlying principles i, I worked very closely with um, learning and development at essex and kent for which i'm grateful and we came up with um a package that we thought yeah let's do the video on this let's let's do the training on this button so we came up with a, the sort of eight subject areas that we wanted to and we thought that that, that staff would benefit and of course we consulted with people what do you need what do you you know what do you want to gain from this what do you not understand and in fact every time we went back to it we kind of made it more simple and more simple and one of the things that i would suggest to to anyone watching this who's looking to do some sort of e-learning is keep it simple really simple um but also adopt the same journey and consistent message there are so many different ways to get to the end result as we all know with 365 actually you could have done this you could have done some people said to me oh you can do it another way yeah i know but actually every time go to the app launcher then do that go to the app launcher so people get that consistent message um so that was the training needs analysis we knew what we we, we then knew what people needed and it was then a case of putting the package together in a palatable timely manner and making it available to staff so we we did that um in the lead up to Christmas last year and it went live um, and uh, just around the end of February, beginning of March um, for, for everybody in both horses. And of course, if you're going to achieve the outcome and demonstrate the impact, it's vital to keep track of the learning and target those who need to undertake the training. And it's interesting to use the language need rather than want it, it a lot of the time so far. What approach have you developed here? And I know you've done some work, interesting work around the LMS in particular. Yeah, so we we um, we've got our own learning management system within the force, uh, and um, I was involved in that many years ago. And so we wanted something that would integrate with our ERP. In our instance, we uh, employ a relations portal. So in our instance, we use SAP. I know obviously other others are available, but we we use SAP. And what we wanted was something, and not just for for this package actually, but within L and D generally, we didn't want to have to update two systems all the time and so when somebody went on to our learning management system and did a package around I don't know, basic driving or, or the use of a piece of equipment we didn't want to have to update the skill set there and then manually have to go and update it in SAP and so every night our, our learning management system in fact is every four hours it talks to SAP and there is a, a data upload to to um demonstrate to, to um upload the skill sets that have been delivered that day and so sap becomes our one accurate um repository if you will record of all the information i'll just share our, my screen now if i may david yeah, and um i'll just show you so just this, let that pop up it takes a moment or two yeah just get that into the right place okay it's coming on screen now there you go james 
Thanks. So this is our, our learning and we've called it Learning Hub. This is our learning management system and we've got many packages on here, e-learning packages. And the um, of course, you know, we recognise specifically around 365 that there's nothing that quite replaces a one to one screen share or sitting alongside somebody, but we wanted to be able to maximise the impact in the time for, for everybody. And so rather than lots of written guides and the written guides do support this there are written guides that go support the training as well because we recognize that everybody learns differently but this package is only 15 minutes long if you were to play every video back to back it's 15 minutes long so i appreciate you can't read this uh, too easily as we're going through it's a bit of an introduction to the course and our digital change lead for both forces, um, Superintendent Cohen, opens the course and just explains in, in, in about a minute um, the benefits and um, some of the benefits that others have already reported upon. And then there's some aims and objectives of the course, which cover, it's really simple, it's the use of correct use of OneDrive and SharePoint, how to access OneDrive, because what we found was that many people around three years ago we, we migrated to OneDrive and for many people they didn't really know or feel the difference it was still using the file explorer they weren't going to online and so nothing really changed but this is how to access OneDrive how to access your team SharePoint document library and just explaining the different terminology between SharePoint because what we recognized in talking to our staff was that they kind of didn't really know what what um, the uh, all of the terminology will meant and so that presumption of knowledge amongst us who kind of do know that stuff we um, we needed to kind of keep check of that and make sure we explain the basics so this is how to create saving files folder document collaboration adding a shortcut to OneDrive I mean adding a shortcut to OneDrive is really key I'll cover that in a minute but mm. it's really significant for people they go yeah but how do I get stuff into Athena how do I put stuff on crash or see other applications so that tells them the objectives and then um, it starts by telling them what their OneDrive is and, and this is the older file explorer view that they'll be used to and the fact that it's absolutely replicated in OneDrive and then there's, there's a video here this this video is about three minutes long and the benefits that we've had the feedback that we've had from this is that people can put it on one screen play the video and then do the thing that on the other screen for them and they can talk through they can you know they can pause and go through it as they go for example adding a favorite or adding a shortcut to OneDrive um, and then and then the, the package goes on to accessing SharePoint and how to follow your team I mean this this I'll just pause on this for a second it, this really surprised me this video is 41 seconds long and it is the most watched video out of all of the e-learning packages mm -hmm. um, and because these videos all stand alone separate to the e-learning package within our suite of how-to videos which i'll show you later so that people can refer to it back later without having to go to the um the e-learning but this video so many people said yeah but how do i save a document to my team library well unless you're following the team you're not going to be able to and so it was a real revelation and even for some people who had been in this world for a little while were saving it to the OneDrive and then moving it later well, you know, so it, there's um, and that, and that's a really simple thing to to some people, but of course we, we included that. So that's an overview of the package. Now, the minute somebody does this package, it uploads their profile, and then overnight it shows their completion on our ERP on SAP. And then what we do every month is we uh, our, um, we run a report on that, and that goes out to all the LPA commanders, BCU commanders, and um, uh, and department directorate leads who can then enforce that through the strat board and the tac board we got our chief officer sign up and support of the e-learning and so therefore the sanction to make this a mandatory package um, we're now about 60 percent uh, completed and we've started to know we've started to feel a real difference um uh, stop me at any point David if you can't no we, we, we start to feel a real difference because rather than the conversation at the beginning of the year around well, what is what is one point or shared drive and people getting the terminology wrong and stuff and it's not their fault of course um, we've started to now see a f cultural change where okay I get that now show me how, how do I build a team homepage again we, you talked about lists and things and so those people that come to us 
uh, as a team are now uh, 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 coming back two, three weeks later and say, hey, I've built a team homepage and the team love it because they don't have to try and find stuff anymore. They can just click on it. And we've got this list for all our actions. And that's where the benefits come from. That's where the benefits come from, the efficiency. But we've got to get people in the right place to start with, which is by showing showing the basics in the in the e-learning. Um, so, James, just a question that reflects something that's come in and it possibly reflects why we do the webinars the way we do as well. You've made your own videos rather than relying on the Microsoft 365 provided ones. Yeah. Why is that important? What's the impact of that? Yeah, it's a really good point, actually. And, and I'll jump out of this for a second and go to our this is our Microsoft 365 um, uh, homepage. So I built this along with colleagues to provide a landing page for all of our staff. Um, there's some series of how to videos here, help and guidance vlogs that we now do and solutions catalog. Now, within the page here, we've got um, support, guidance and learning. And one of those links is to learning pathways. Absolutely, that has a place. But what we recognized is even the Microsoft learning pathways, which is fantastic, is not detailed enough for people when they don't see a screenshot of the page they're used to. When they, they see something in learning pathways, we don't go, well, we haven't got that. Immediately, it's a turn off. And so we chose to record the packages um, ourselves. And you know, sadly for staff, it's me droning on in my, all of the videos, but it's we used a really simple software. And you know, I'll share that with people listening. We use something called FreeCam 8. FreeCam 8 is a free piece of software. IT um, downloaded that for me. I use that. I, 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 it takes about, you know, maybe an hour and a half to do a, a, a four minute video because we re record and play again. And and afterwards, I'll do I'll use the um, Premiere Pro editing. Now, you know, ClipChamp's out there now. It's out there. Some forces may well have that. And of course, you can use that and you can use a pretty professional package. But at the time, it wasn't available for us. And so I used Premiere Pro. But the reason for creating your own videos is the immediate buy in when the first page is their intranet home page and you talk somebody through click here. This is what they're used to. It's that muscle memory. That's why we did our own videos. Um, but and it's the context as well, and, and that's what we find with the feedback we get from the Wednesday webinar is we put the things into the context of policing rather than the generic Microsoft terms, which I think, I think is the, the key value on this. Uh, just conscious that this, keep, please keep your questions coming in if you, if you want to know more. You know, you, we Wednesday webinars, we record them as a live event or a teach just a meeting. And then we again, I edit them on Premiere Pro and make them accessible. So it is about making sure you're using the tools that are there and it not putting huge efforts into them. Things obviously get updated. How do you cope with the when things get updated or are most of the things basic ways of working rather than technical skills? Yeah, there was um, there's one video that we, we may change just around the manage access, actually, because it's it's changed ever so slightly subtly that um, uh, and of course, um, Microsoft will change something overnight. And we all log on the next morning. And go, oh, that looks a bit different. It feels a bit different. And I think you've got to keep a check of that because the minute it doesn't look the same for somebody who's following that package, then it's going to be a, a, um, a block to their learning. So there's only one change fundamentally there, which was um, which is a slight difference in the screen, the manage access, but actually it's fairly intuitive that thing, but you're absolutely right. I mean, obviously with any learning and development product or the product that they've that, that they housed for us, um, we will take a regular look at the content to make sure it's still relevant. Uh, and, and if one of the how-to videos uh, uh, needs to be updated, which it has done, then, then we'll do that when a new feature changes. But um, yeah, you've got to keep on top of that, make sure it's current. We've already covered some of the feedback, but I think it's really reiterating how much commitment does this actually have in terms of a frontline sergeant, a PC, a PCSO? What commitment do they need to put in to be able to start gaining some of the benefits of that level of knowledge? Well, this was part of the buy in actually with um, chief officers and, and, and um, stakeholders is that what's the cost benefit analysis of this in terms of time? Obviously, face to face training is incredibly expensive, um, but the but the actual you could set aside 20 minutes. The, the, if you watch every video, 15 minutes back to back is the top, the, the, the top, the, the maximum amount of time. But 20 minutes, I don't think is too hard for people to find. The feedback that we've had across the board has, as you know, 95% of it has been really product uh, supportive. And even that 5% that, that has 
uh, to a degree been critical has been yeah I kind of knew that or well can you show me something more complex well yes we can but not here because if it had been too complex then it would have turned off 95 percent of the staff so the feedback across the board has been really good and a lot of people said well I thought I knew my way around here but I didn't know that about following a team or I didn't know you could create a shortcut to OneDrive. That's really helpful. So even people who were happy to, the, to, to sort of accept the changes of, of 365, if you will, still learned something and went away from it. But the, for me, the biggest thing has been the, the, the language change. OK, I get that. Show me more. Uh, and that acceptance into the new world, because um, as I said, that's that's where the benefits come from when people start creating their team homepage or they're using a list rather than an Excel document, which is automatically sending an update when an action gets updated. You know, it's that sort of stuff that we're seeing a real change in. So really, the big question is what's next and where are you going next with this sort of work, James? Yeah, so the e-learning is we, we, we had a, uh, initially we had a thought process to do we do a basic level e-learning and then maybe a supervisor e-learning? Um, but we we've got a series of how to packages. So this is going to be our um, our e-learning package and new joiners will be mandated to do this. The whole force, every single member of staff. So, you know, just under 12,000 people have been mandated to complete this, everybody. And it's being reported upon and and um, so so that everybody will do that. And then everybody that joins the organization from here on in will do that moving forward. The next steps. Um, it kind of goes hand in glove with this because it meets the demand because there's only one tech advisor me for both forces and a small project team involved with the migration and, and support. So the next step was how do we actually support the community because uh, um, internally I mean because IT help desk quite rightly will say well there's not a fault with the program the computers nothing's broken what you're asking for here is training on demand we're not a training on demand department we're a fix it if it's broken department and so when I came into the role in, in June last year, we had um, just under 80 uh, business champions. We've now got 170, so we've grown the business champion community. Um, and to go back to a question you asked earlier on, David, around when do people do the training? In in one force, that they, they are provided overlap protected time, and so that man, those packages are, are mandated for them. And another force, we did some what we call flex training, and so I delivered some of those sessions. So I delivered five sessions to 150 staff at a time because they have that protected learning time, um, which orientated around them doing the e-learning and then some Q&A as well, which was really productive. But so the next steps, the next steps are this, and I'll just share the screen here again if I can which is uh, a link to our, our 365 site. So what I wanted to do was, well, we, you know, as a team and obviously consultatively uh, on our project team, um, what we wanted to do was to support development and uh, and ideas and those next steps, because the e-learning part of it was not very resource intensive for us as a team. There's the e-learning, go and do it. It's the next steps afterwards. And of course, the business champions, whilst supportive of 365 there may be a a difference in um the level of skill even within our 170 business champions some may just advocate it others may be experts in power automate so mindful of citizen development what we wanted to do was to create a group of people within that business champion group and i've called them super users so we've got 15 super users within the business champion group who I went out to them and their line managers said, look, can we have two 30 minute slots a week? Just give up two 30 minute slots of your time to help the rest of the force or forces. And in return, we'll give you early access to loop. We'll give you power automate under this strict regime of control and protocols that don't just create a flow and then go and connect it and hope it works. It comes through us. There's a system and process in place. And we'll connect it to the flow connector, et cetera. And so, um, and it's worked really well. I now have a monthly super user meeting with our 15 super users. We train, support, uh, share learning, and I'm really pleased that within uh, about um, well, within about 11 days, we had 17 people book a 30 minute slot for support. And the super users might be something that, oh yeah, how do I put a filter on a list? Or how do I do that team homepage thing? Well, that's 17 lots of sessions that I or the small team haven't had to find, but in return, the quid pro quo for the um, 
uh, the, the super users is, is they're getting something out of it as well. So our staff can do this. They can click on book a super user support session and using MS bookings, it goes straight into the MS bookings. They can look at a session and go Tuesday, this is still Thursday, the thir uh, sorry, 16th. Um, who's available? Oh yeah, Chloe's available, perfect. I'll book her in at two o'clock. They book that in there. It goes to Chloe's diary. Um, Chloe's diary is already available according to what she's decided her availability will be. And, and they go ahead and have their super user slot. It's brilliant. There's no emails, there's no phone calls, there's no trying to arrange something. Using MS bookings is a game changer. And I know we're talk about that yeah. uh, other other things but so that's 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 the next steps um and we're already reporting on some of the solutions that we're managing to achieve here in the solutions catalog so there's nothing sensitive um, on this screen but these these are some of our solutions that we are putting in place so that our staff can see oh this this was an intel briefing this was an opc daily handover look and it saved twelve thousand pounds a year in chief inspector time so people can look at that and go well that's a good idea and we could do that in another context so that's where we're at um it, yeah it, every day is a school day it's all developing as we go but, but well um, we've got a last couple of questions away. so we'll rattle through them because we're getting close to the, the bottom of the hour uh i know kenton essex are a big user of viva uh, is that part of your approach as well Sorry, say that again. I know you're a big user of Viva in the force. Is yeah. Viva part of the M365 adoption plan as well? A a absolutely. We've got a, a Viva Engage um, page for 365. All of the um, the force can access that. We did have a separate business champion one. I shut that down and move it, move it all into one place. So even the business champion type questions were available for the whole force to see. So absolutely, we, we have a Viva Engage page and we reg all of the business champions share those tips and ideas there so the rest of the force forces can see that so yeah we do use that a lot that's brilliant there's a couple of questions coming in about how to sh to link the lms together what we'll say is if you reach out to your business engagement manager in force that's probably the best way from pds so, so we can do that so you don't get swamped with hundreds of calls going who how do i solve this problem etc so if, if you are looking at that there's the business engagement managers just appearing on screen now uh, and we'll try and get through to the other questions in terms of topics and drives but i think it's really important that thank you james that's enlightening so much and the idea of being able to link it to the lms i think is the the pivot point for a lot of forces being able to audit it and to to manage it but i think being able to to do what you're doing with this sort of work is, is fantastic to to drive things forward and in fact we're going to support that a little bit with next week's webinar we're going to do a little bit of ways of working and common tips where we'll do again because we know we have a, a ever-changing audience on the wednesday webinars we'll revisit some of the technologies that we are all using today uh, make sure you're using the best of it like messaging to teams all those sort of things so please pop your feedback uh, for any webinars in into the, to the screen on now i'm just putting up the qr code uh, which will help you to give us some feedback of the sort of things you want us to cover in our Wednesday webinars. And if this subject has been really helpful, then please let us know. We have got a lot coming up in the next few weeks. Of course, we've got uh, uh, another when uh, the when next week's Wednesday webinars. And we're going to be looking at modern management in a couple of weeks time as well, uh, where we're going to be looking at how we can enable some of these technologies and uh, to, so you can leverage the values out of them. Of course, it's getting close to uh, half past the hour, so we're going to close it down there. If you have any more questions, please reach out and contact us. Obviously, subscribe to our Wednesday webinars on YouTube if you missed the recordings and catch up on them. But thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much.